Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we're going to be talking about how to figure out what size of a solar generator or solar power station will fit your needs. But there's a lot of confusion out there regarding the capabilities of different size solar power stations, particularly related to the kinds of devices that they can run and just as important, how long can they run those devices. So to give some clarity on those capabilities, we're going to be using these power stations with devices that I have around my house, ranging from just small electronics that don't use much power all the way to larger things like my refrigerator and my box freezer. And as y'all can see, I have products from EcoFlow on the table here with me, so I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. If you decide you want to pick up any of these products, EcoFlow is running the biggest promo of the year for Black Friday as we speak and some of their devices are up to 50% off. So be sure to check out the links in the description below to take advantage of those Black Friday deals, which run until November 28th, 2022. So the first kind of power station that we're gonna talk about are small power stations, and I consider those to be around 500 watt hours or less. And a good example of that would be the EcoFlow River 2. It has a 256 watt hour capacity. It can handle 300 running watts of output or 600 surge watts. As far as what it'll run and how long it'll run it for, it can handle a box fan for a couple hours, but a better option may be to get a battery operated fan and some rechargeable batteries because this can run for probably at least a couple of nights. Then as far as lights go, you can run a lamp for around six or seven hours using a CFL bulb, 12 hours using an LED bulb, or you could run something like this small table lamp for around 15 or 16 hours. And using battery operated lighting instead of something like a lamp is another area where you could vastly improve runtime. You'll probably be able to run a larger computer for around two hours. I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro and it's kind of a power hog, so you might be able to get more out of your computer. Even though it's not the best use for an emergency power supply, you can run a TV and Blu-ray player for around two hours. So if you're wanting to watch a movie, I strongly recommend picking one that's about an hour and a half long just to be on the safe side. But where a small device like this is really gonna shine is gonna be recharging batteries. So recharging things like double A's, triple A's, these D cells. Also, if you have other devices, things like power banks or rechargeable flashlights, and then even your cell phone, this is going to do extremely good with. You can also run some lower wattage power tools, things like air compressors and drills. But to run a lot of drills, you're going to need to have X-Boost activated, which is more or less a governor built into the power station that if a device tries to use more than its 300 running watts, it just kind of caps it. So either the device will shut down or if it tries to pull a whole lot of power, then the power station's overload protection will kick in to prevent damage to the unit. Now getting into the things that it cannot run, it's not gonna be able to power larger appliances, things like full-size refrigerator freezers, box freezers, or washing machines. But if you're wanting to preserve food during an emergency situation, you can use this to power a small 12-volt refrigerator freezer for at least a few hours. You also won't be able to use a hair dryer on full power. X-Boost will probably get it to start on low mode, but it's not going to get very hot. And you won't be able to run higher wattage power tools. But a good way around that is to just use cordless power tools. Like right here, I have a circular saw. And in addition to being able to recharge traditional batteries, you can also use a small device like this to recharge even some relatively larger power tool batteries so that you can use those tools if you need to make emergency repairs. So smaller power stations and solar generators are a very good choice if first of all you're on a budget and you can't spend a thousand dollars or more on a full setup or if you know that you're just going to want to power small devices or do things like recharge batteries this is going to do those tasks very well. Next thing we're going to talk about are mid-sized power stations and I personally consider these to be around one kilowatt hour in size. That used to be considered a large power station but considering that there's some really huge ones on the market now I'm just going to consider this to be mid-sized for our purpose. And there's a couple different kinds even within that. Like we have standalone models like this one and expandable models. But regardless of if you get standalone or if you get an expandable model, 
it's greatly going to increase what you can do with these. A good example of a standalone model would be the original EcoFlow Delta. It has a capacity of 1,260 watt hours, can handle up to 1,800 running watts and 3,300 surge watts. So in addition to getting a larger capacity, you're also going to be getting a more powerful inverter with a model like this. And you're also going to be getting a lot more plugs that'll allow you to run more devices at the same time. And this is going to be able to do everything that a small power station can do just for a longer period of time. For example, you're going to get more cell phone charges out of this. You're also going to be able to run things like box fans for a longer period of time. But you're also going to be able to do other things like run larger appliances. For example, something like this, it's going to be able to run a refrigerator for around three hours. It can also power a small box freezer for around a day, which is pretty good considering most power outages in the United States they'll only last around two or three hours. So for just your normal run-of-the-mill power gets knocked out, you'll be able to either save the food in your fridge during that time, or if you know it's going to last for a little bit longer, then you can just move your most expensive stuff over to your freezer and save it that way. You'll also be able to run a lot of power tools that you can't with a smaller unit. So you're going to be able to run things like corded circular saws, corded angle grinders, and then even some bigger things like miter saws, small table saws. So that's going to allow you to make repairs after a disaster happens, or if you need to fortify your home for one reason or another, Having something like this is going to let you use your tools to do that as quickly as possible. You can also use something like this to power a washing machine. And that's nice if the power goes out while you're in the middle of a load of laundry, you can go ahead and finish it up and then hang those clothes. Another way to use a power station like this is to help you cook. For example, you can run a small microwave using this for a little bit less than an hour. And I mean, that's really not bad considering most microwavable meals take less than 10 minutes to prepare. You can also use it to heat small amounts of water. Just be sure to put a, like a wooden spoon inside of that cup or whatever you're using so that it doesn't become superheated and become hazardous. You can also run a crock pot for around four or five hours. And we've actually done that. A little over a year ago, my wife had just started a crock pot meal and then the power went out. And since she was at home by herself with our toddler, getting the gas generator hooked up to its battery, rolled around the house, started up, and everything wasn't really an option. But she was able to take a power station, set it right next to the crock pot, plug it in, and then save that meal. So getting into expandable power stations, a good example of one of those would be the EcoFlow Delta 2. And when you have an expandable power station, you have the power station just like normal, but you also can get extra batteries that you can hook up to them to increase its capacity. So just by itself, this can store around 1,024 watt hours of energy, which is a little bit smaller than the Delta. But if you have a Delta II extra battery, you can expand its capacity to 2,048 watt hours. Or if you have a Delta Max extra battery, you can expand it to 3,040 watt hours. So with the original Delta, you might get a little bit more capacity up front, but you're kind of stuck with what you have with something like this, it allows you to purchase what you can and then build out a more powerful system over time. The Delta II can handle 1800 running watts and 2700 surge watts and it also has X boost. So that means that both devices are going to be able to start pretty much any 110, 120 volt AC device that you throw at it. But the big difference is, is going to be how long you can power it. And that's where having an expandable capacity is a very big advantage. The Delta II also has LFP batteries or lithium iron phosphate batteries, which allows it to have a much longer lifespan. For example, the original Delta, it can go 500 cycles before it reaches that 80% original capacity. This can go 3000 cycles. So, I mean, it's it has six times the lifespan that the original Delta does. So power stations like these are going to be a good choice, first of all, if you want to run some larger appliances. An example of that would be you have a lot of meat in your freezer and you don't want it to get spoiled. You can use something like this to power it. Also, if you want to be able to run smaller devices for a much longer period of time than you could with one of those smaller power stations. So getting into the large power stations and solar generators, a good example of one of those would be the EcoFlow Delta Max. And I consider a large power station or solar generator to be something with a 2000 watt hour capacity or larger. This one has a 2016 watt hour capacity by itself, but it's also expandable like the Delta II. 
With this, you can expand it all the way to 6,048 watt hours, which is over six kilowatt hours of energy if you have two Delta Max extra batteries. As far as output, it can handle 2,400 running watts and 5,000 surge watts. So these are gonna be able to power a lot of the same things that mid-sized power stations can, but with a much larger capacity. So you're gonna be able to power those devices for a longer period of time. And the Delta Max, it does have higher output ratings. So that means that you can power maybe multiple uh, high wattage devices at the same time, whereas if you had something a little bit smaller, maybe you wouldn't be able to do that. It's just important to realize that when you're running multiple high wattage devices at the same time, it's really going to drain the battery much quicker. Then you can get even larger power stations like the Delta Pro, which I don't have, but just by itself has a 3600 watt hour capacity and can be expanded up to 25,000 watt hours, which is absolutely crazy. And y'all, just a reminder that EcoFlow is running their biggest sale of the year right now. So if you think you may want to pick up a power station or a solar generator, be sure to use the links in the description below. Now, if you're going to pick up either a power station or a solar generator, there's some other things that you need to consider and charging speed is definitely one of them. All of the devices that I showed today can be charged using AC power from a wall outlet or generator, solar panels, or the 12 volt plug in your car. But EcoFlow, they have something called extreme charging technology, which allows their devices to be charged from either a wall outlet or generator very quickly. Most of them can be fully recharged in an hour or an hour and a half, just depending on the model that you get. Whereas with some other companies, you're talking like, six to eight hours or something like that to get a mid-sized solar generator or power station recharged all the way. And when it comes to solar panels, something small like the River 2, it's only gonna be able to handle like one set of 110 watt panels, which is fine because it has a small capacity. But if you have something larger and you wanna be able to recharge it quickly, then you're gonna need to consider getting either multiple, say 160 watt panels or maybe one larger set of panels. Otherwise, it's gonna take a very long time to charge those larger power stations just using sunlight. And you may wanna consider getting a backup gas generator to charge these devices during times where you don't get a whole lot of sunlight. An inverter generator would be a better choice for something like that since they're better at protecting devices with sensitive electronics. Another thing you can do if you have both a solar generator and a gas generator is like what I do. When the power goes out, I don't mess with the gas generator. I just hook one of these up to like my fridge and my box freezer and if it only lasts for a couple hours, then these are gonna be perfectly fine for that. But if it lasts longer and their capacity starts to get a little low, I can always wheel the gas generator around the house, turn that on, recharge these, and either turn it off and let these power those devices again, or if I think it could last for a longer period of time, I'll just leave the gas generator running all night and save these for later. And it's important to understand that things like air conditioners and heaters use power very quickly. So even like a mid-sized power station, like a standalone model, might be able to handle a small window AC unit for around three hours. That's probably not the best way to use your power. So having things like battery operated fans when it's hot or things like propane buddy heaters when it's cold, that'll allow you to take care of your climate control needs, but also save your other power for when you really need it or for the devices that are even more important. Cooking uses a lot of power also, but it's a little more doable if it's only done occasionally or for a short period of time. And I recently did a video showing several ways that you can use to cook off grid, and you can find that by clicking here. And I'd also like to thank EcoFlow once again for sponsoring this video. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.